Welcome to a very special edition of Life in Surround. This is a Surround album review, and it's not a classic album, and it's not from some unknown artist. This is from Mr. Alan Parsons of the Alan Parsons Project, engineer for Pink Floyd, as well as other endeavors. And this is a new album that is receiving a surround mix at the initial release. So that's a pretty rare event, so I thought I'd celebrate and just get on with a review video. So first of all, it comes in a digipack. Is this a trifold? I guess it's a trifold design. CD and a DVD video that features surround in DTS and a little booklet has lots of fun facts so let's talk about the booklet it has a lyric page and production information page for every song and I like that each song gets its own page so it's pretty easy to follow the album. Each song also gets this quote down here at the bottom of the page. I won't try to show it on camera, but the quotes are in this light blue field. And uh, they are mostly obviously relevant to the song. So the album is centered around the theme of magic. And I think there are just... Uh, couple of minor departures from that theme. It's a it's a DVD video, sort of like a valid path. Even though that was a dual disc, the DVD layer, uh, the best that you could get in surround was DTS. And for on air, all I have is a DTS CD. I don't know if that was released as a DTS DVD. Anyway, so this is high resolution, but it's not lossless. It's DTS, which is a compression algorithm, so it is lossy. So let's talk about the mix and the sound, and then we'll go song by song and call it a day. So this is in DTS. It's not in advanced resolution or MLP. Um, that's in keeping with Alan Parsons' other solo, multi-channel releases, On Air, and A Valid Path. Neither one of them were lossless. As some of you know, the Alan Parsons Project multi-channel releases both came out on Blu-ray and are on lossless codecs. But uh, his solo stuff, for some reason, gets released lossy. What does that mean in terms of enjoyment? which really is the bottom line, the most important thing about this hobby. Can you enjoy this music? This DTS 5.1 mix sounds great. At least on my system, I'm running a Denon X6400H through mostly definitive speakers with a poke sub and a poke center. Not super duper high end. I played it out of my Sony X800. I also have an Oppo BDP-103. So I don't know. Maybe if you have a $30,000 system, the sound of this is going to disappoint. Or maybe they engineered it and mastered it superbly, and it's just a really quality product, even though um, they chose DTS as the codec. At the end of the day, I guess you're going to have to make that call. This sounds wonderful on my system. I completely enjoy how it sounds. So in that regard, I'm not disappointed that it came out in DTS. Because I enjoy it. Uh, the mix. This is everything that you would expect out of Alan Parsons with one exception so this is a discrete mix. You have important information in your surrounds, 
I didn't go and put my ear next to the center, so I don't know if most of the fronts you use a phantom center, or if there's really important discrete information in the center. I can't swear to that. But um, the fronts, you know, have a lot of activity going on, and whether that's phantom center or center is neither here nor there. The fronts sound great. The surrounds have lots of important things dedicated back there. Sometimes you get brass in a more orchestral arranged song, backing vocals, even lead parts like guitar. Uh, there's one song where you would think the piano would be up front and the strings would be in the surrounds just in terms of what's dominant and what's supportive, but instead you get the piano and the surrounds and the strings up front. So he showcases things in different ways from track to track. Lots of activity in the surrounds. This is by no means uh, a big stereo kind of thing. It is a discrete surround mix. It sounds great. In my opinion, the decisions about what were panned where were all very well done. The one exception I would say, there are times where there's kind of a keyboard sequencer um, playing like a rhythmic melody, kind of, you know, boo -doo -boo -doo -boo -doo -boo -boo, kind of whatever. And I would have loved to have heard that panning around the room in more of like a dark side of the moon kind of way. And a lot of times when there is an interesting sequencer bit, it's anchored somewhere either in the surrounds or in the fronts or blended between them or whatever. So sometimes there are certain elements of this album that I wish they had taken more of a chance on and actively panned. However, uh, there are moments where they choose to do that, like the song One Note Symphony has this kind of weird, probably keyboard-derived, spacey, patch and it does kind of make its way around the room in like a very rhythmic way. So that's pretty satisfying. So in terms of the mix, you know, like judging from what Parsons is capable of on a scale of, you know, one to 10, I would say this is like a nine. Okay. So it's, it's very good. Maybe there is the opportunity to nitpick here or there, but uh, it's, it's very, very, very good, okay? Now, the sound is, is great. Nothing on this album seemed out of, out of balance. The instruments, the vocals, drums, orchestra, other supportive elements, everything seems fine to me. So very well balanced. I think the 5.1 mix on the DVD sounds a bit better for what that is than the CD does for what that is. So I have a pretty good sound system in my car and certain CDs sound great in that environment. This one I think just sounds okay. The DVD and the CD, by the way, both sound mastered very low to me. So you can crank them, and that is a plus. Both sides, stereo and surround, seem to both be very crankable to me. So track by track, we have Sorcerer's Apprentice, which is an instrumental cover. It's a reimagining, as they call it in the booklet. The big feature here is Steve Hackett on guitar. So that's very cool. The Miracle features Jason Mraz on vocal. And I kind of had to Google him. I'm sorry, I'm not super duper into pop music. But he is a platinum selling artist and he has a great voice. Well utilized here. It's one of the catchier songs on the album. As Lights Fall features Mr. Parsons on lead vocal and he does just fine. You see anything else notable? It's a reflective Alan Parsons song, and he does just fine. One Note Symphony 
At first, this song kind of irritated me, but there are already listeners out there that are claiming this as like their standout track. And in subsequent listens, and especially in 5.1, uh, the main vocal does carry one note throughout the whole thing, which is kind of a bizarre thing to try. But the arrangement adds harmonies and counterpoint and stuff, so there's plenty of interest in this song in terms of how they arranged it, how they produced it. And like I touched on a few minutes ago, this does have a pretty wicked, like, active panning around the room with certain sound effects. I thought this song was just about space, and so therefore not really about magic, but he ties it in with an Arthur C. Clarke quote, the author of 2001, if I recall correctly, and he even narrates that quote in the song. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So, in the sense that, you know, like our universe is astounding and inexplicable in some ways, and therefore, like, discovering new things about it is magical. Like, I get that. So that's cool. Uh, sometimes... Features Lou Graham on vocal. He sounds like a million bucks. I wish they would have written him a little bit better song. It just comes off as a little cliched, maybe. I don't know. It's okay. It doesn't offend me, but uh, it doesn't absolutely thrill me either. It sounds very good, and Lou Graham sounds great. Features a quote from Lou Reed supporting it, so... He was really capitalizing on the lose there. So that's cool. Soiree Fantasique has some French cafe sound effects going on to liven things up. Harry Houdini quote, a picture of the Louvre here in the book. Um, I guess my one nitpick about this song is one of the co-writers, Doug Powell, seems to be given the lead vocal for the title line, the titular line. It's mostly sung by Todd Cooper, who does a great job, and then Doug Powell comes in for the titular line at this key point, and uh, see, Alan Parsons covers vocals on this as well. I would have either given that line to Todd Cooper or Parsons. There's just something about Doug Powell coming in right when he does that doesn't quite do it for me. But it doesn't ruin the song either, and others out there may never even notice it. That was just something that kind of jumped out to me. I probably would have made a slightly different decision as a producer. But still um, a plenty good track in every other regard. Fly to Me, Mark McKell. I had to Google him to kind of figure out what was going on with him. I think Parsons may have met a lot of these singers, like, down in the Santa Monica, L.A. music scene, like open mics and cafes and stuff. Because I don't remember what's remarkable about Mark McKell. I don't even remember. I already forgot. Um, I will flash a note here just to try to be a little bit more fair to Mark because I don't want to be a jerk. Um, I think he does fine, and I'm sure that there were really good reasons to include him here. Requiem. Yeah, this is my favorite track on the album. It's a little bit of an uptick in tempo, and it's got this jazzy feel to it. If the whole record like sounded more like Requiem, I would be a happy camper, but probably not some others out there, because it... Definitely is not a track that has that classic Alan Parson Projects uh, chug to it. Like other tracks have him chugging away on guitar in a way that's more like Eye in the Sky. Uh, I want to say As Lights Fall would be that kind of track. Anyway, Requiem is kind of a jazzy departure. And as with David Gilmore's Rattle That Lock, like my favorite track on that album is actually the jazzy departure. I think it's called Girl in the Yellow Dress or something. So I love this track. Uh, this is one that I would return to 
for sure. Uh, Todd Cooper on vocal. Yeah, they do a great job on this one. It's fun, and I dig it. Years of Glory, PJ Olsen. Uh, again, I tried Googling him and um, didn't really see a whole lot. I will flash info about PJ Olsen here. Because, again, I don't want to, you know, be dismissive. As the Limelight Fades Away, Jordan Huffman. Now, one of these singers was involved in Alan Parsons' project. And that was either PJ Olsen, and that's where they know him from, or Jordan Huffman. Anyway, I don't really re remember a whole lot about either of those songs. They're just okay. They're fine. And then I Can't Get There From Here. Memorable melody, I think one of the stronger songs on the album, features Jared Mahoney, who did the song for the motion picture soundtrack for 52577, which is a film about Star Wars, and was directed by the guy who did the cover art, I think. Yeah, album cover and graphic design by Patrick Reed Johnson. So he did this movie about Star Wars, which hasn't received a public format release. I guess it was just a short run in theaters. 52577, I guess that's the day that Star Wars came out. And uh, I guess the movie is about Star Wars impact on people's lives or something. Not sure. But anyway, so there's a variety of vocalists on this album. They all do fine. Uh, they usually have a writing credit on the song, which is cool. So, you know, maybe they have a little bit of royalties coming their way. So that, that's a good opportunity for them. They're singing to their strengths. Uh, some of the songs, I don't know, so far for me they're not super memorable, but there are already four songs on the album that are pretty memorable to me. Sorcerer's Apprentice, Miracle, Requiem, and I Can't Get There From Here. The other songs on the album um, I have no major problems with, so this is a solid release, a great surround mix. If I were going to compare it to what else I know of Alan Parsons, uh, compared to his other solo releases, I would say this is consistent. I don't love it more or less than On Air or Valid Path of his multi-channel stuff. And then um, sonically, it sounds just fine. I don't really have any criticism of it, and the mix is pretty damn solid, so if you are into Alan Parsons' solo material, and into Surround in particular, I'm recommending you pick this up. I found it on Bull Moose for like 17 bucks. It's a CD, a DVD. There are no video extras on the DVD. That is a question I wanted to answer, and let me see. I guess there's not much more to say other than thank you, Mr. Parsons, for releasing a multi-channel album. And I stand in solidarity with many of your other fans asking, please, please, please continue to release other albums in surround, especially those classic Alan Parsons project albums, Pyramid, iRobot, Friendly Card. Please, please, please. We would love to hear them, and money's just waiting to fly out of our wallets. So until next time, thank you for watching. Please thumbs up, thumbs down, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell, share the video, discuss the video, call me names, agree, disagree, it's all good. And I will see you next time on Life in Surround.